Welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're looking at what's new in Reaper 6.35, plus catching up on some of the things from the previous couple updates. There isn't any one big feature to showcase in this video, uh, but lots of little things. Let's start off with changes to rendering. The change log says, add post render action under stats button to jump to position a first rendered sample over 0 dB. Add post render action under stats button to display rendered statistics in web browser. Display overall render progress indicator and display up to 512 view meters limited to screen height. So let's start with that. So I'm going to render this project and we're going to do it slowly so we can see everything here. There's now this render bar. There's also the completed amount. If you're doing a batch render multiple files, this uh, these will update according to the actual progress of the entire batch. We've had these options to launch the file and show in Finder for a while, but now we have this stats button. And under the stats button, open render statistics in web browser. And it looks like this when we have all of the loudness options enabled in preferences, which we'll look at a little bit later. And if this project clipped when rendering, we would have this option to jump to first clip position in project. If I was to render all of these tracks uh, separately, so using the selected stems option, again, in time selection and render. Now you'll see up to 512 view meters. So that's going to depend on the number of tracks and the number of track channels. In this case, it's 13 stereo files that are rendering here. If you had some tracks that have 64 channels, that sort of thing, then you would see many more. Moving on. Make it clear when normalization is enabled. Inform user when normalizing may cause relative levels of rendered files to change. Support normalizing stems to common gain based on normalizing master mix, even if not rendering master mix. So there's a few things there with this normalize button. As you can see here, it now says normalize on when normalization is on. Uh, so it said normalize and normalize on. When the relative levels of rendered files are changing, that's going to be when rendering stem selected tracks. We can use the normalize each file separately or normalize master mix to common gain. You can see this little tooltip here. Relative levels of rendered files will stay the same or when normalize each file separately is on, it says they may change. There's even more changes to rendering. In 6.34, they added the option to disable calculating loudness statistics. And in 6.35, they changed it. So now you can enable LUFSI, LUFSM, and LRA or LUFSS statistics separately. Which means when you go into preferences and rendering and you go to calculate statistics when rendering, we have options for true peak, LUFS integrated, and momentary, plus loudness range, short term loudness, all separate. Here's what the render statistics look like when you disable all the LUFS options and true peak. And when everything is on, you see all of these. Next, we're going to look at some changes to effects. Changelog says remove global option for plugin bridging. Bridging options should be controlled per plugin via effects browser. In the preferences, we'll no longer see options for bridging um, in the plugins page, the compatibility page, or the VST page. That's all moved to the individual plugins in the effects browser. So let's say we take a VST3 and let's say Amplitude 5, just as an example. If we right click it, go to run as. We have the options of automatic, separate process, dedicated process, and native only. So if you don't know, bridging plugins puts them into a separate memory space. So if that plugin crashes, only the plugin and the bridge crash, not taking out your entire Reaper project. Bridging is also related to 32-bit plugins in a 64-bit environment. Uh, on this computer, that's not an option, but on Windows, that would be an option. Separate process uses a separate chunk of memory just for plugins that are bridged. Dedicated process puts each plugin in its own memory space, so only that plugin can crash rather than uh, one plugin taking out all of your bridged plugins. There used to be an option in the preferences for setting every plugin to separate or dedicated. Um, now it's on a per plugin basis because it's really not necessary in most cases to, uh, to use separate or dedicated process. 
only with the buggy plugins. Support linked stereo channels in channel mapper user mix mode. In the channel mapper down mixer plugin, which was added a little while ago to help with um, routing of multi-channel audio. Now, if we go to user mix and we'll see a link for stereo. So uh, let me just increase the number of channels on this track to let's say 20. There we go. And so now each pair of channels can have their own mix and you don't need to separately control the left and the right unless you want to. So you can stereo link and uh, it will snap to the left channel of that stereo pair. It's only in the user mix mode, which is the only mode that actually has the volume controls for each channel individually. There's one quick change to Rescript I wanted to highlight. Add IDE color preset configuration to Rescript tab. Early version six, uh, I don't remember the exact number. They added themes for the Reaper IDE, in, uh, integrated development environment, which is you know the code editor. In the theme development tweak window, there are different um, themes that you can load. I have my own, for example. So now instead of having to go to this window, you can also go to Preferences, Rescript, and under IDE Colors, you can see the different um, themes here. For Preferences in Scrubbing and Jogging, allow configurable maximum jog rate of 1x, 2x, 4x, 8x, and the default is 2x. Preferences, Audio, Playback. Max jog rate is set to two. We can set this up to eight. Jogging is when you drag the cursor and it plays faster than real time. That does depend on either actions or mouse modifiers. I think in my own setup, I actually have the edit cursor handle set to disable. So I'll just change that now to jog audio. And if I grab this, it will play up to double speed four times it's like this four times faster and eight times. In 6.34, they changed some things with peaks display gain. So there's now an action to reset peaks display gain, and they renamed the actions to adjust peak display zoom rather than peaks view gain. So that means when you are increasing the waveform height, the default shortcut is shift up arrow. If you want to go back to the default or the minimum height, we go to the action list and we search for peaks display. And there's this action, reset peaks display zoom for project. We can run that and that resets it. And they renamed these actions. It used to be um, increased peaks display, uh, peaks display gain instead of zoom. I think zoom is just easier to find now. And while we're looking at the action list, here's what's changed recently. Optionally match synonyms of common words when searching for action names, such as display will match show, etc. The list of synonyms will come from the action list action list synonyms section. A common one would be searching for, let's say, delete. And synonyms of that would be things like clear or remove. So instead of having to do the search three times, you know, now all of the rel relevant results are more likely to show up here, um, even if you use the wrong word. We can disable that by just right-clicking and uncheck search for synonyms of common words. So here I'll uncheck that and now my search only has the word delete in there. And with it on, search results are a lot more. You get remove plus clear and maybe some of the other ones. You no longer need a thesaurus to search the action list. Making custom actions is going to be a lot easier. For automation, obey grid snap settings when using freehand draw. Freehand draw is enabled under mouse modifiers and you'll need to set this up possibly on two different uh, settings. So envelope point, left drag. I've got mine on command. So freehand draw envelope. And I also have control for freehand draw envelope ignoring snap. And for envelope segment, I've got command for freehand draw envelope and control for freehand draw envelope ignoring snap. 
and for envelope lane, just to be sure um, I've got it set the same everywhere and I'll hit apply. So your defaults may be different from that. Using command drag, I can add in points and as you can see, they snap to the vertical grid. I can disable snapping and it looks like this, which is the same as uh, if I had snap to grid on and I used a different modifier and did that. So that's, that's holding control on my keyboard and that's doing a freehand uh, drawing of envelope points, ignoring snap to grid and using the command key, I can snap to grid and my envelope points are going to be um, locked in position to the grid. And as you can see, using this mode, um, edge points are automatically added. So if I click here, it's going to put in points before and after to smoothly transition to that point. If I use the control key instead of the command key for a freehand draw ignoring snap, it will just do a very quick um, point there. So there's still edge points in this case, but they're very short. I think that's a pretty small change, but I think more importantly, uh, it's going to get more people using the mouse modifier automation options because it's so powerful, um, but a lot of people seem to be scared of automation tools. We have another function with mouse modifiers, marquee zoom. Allow tracks to be sized smaller in order to fit on screen. I want to talk about this in the video Again, because I think people overlook the mouse modifiers, marquee zoom might be a function that you've never seen before. So let's look at that now. Marquee zoom looks like this, where we get this magnifying glass while you're holding down the mouse modifiers, and we can draw a box around, and when we release, that zooms and centers that on the screen. So we can zoom in really close, and then with another mouse modifier, we can go back, into different steps back to seeing the whole project. So I'll show you my mouse modifiers for that. So under track and left drag, I've got command control on marquee zoom. And under left click, I have restore previous zoom level. So I'm holding command control, dragging a selection, and then I'm holding command control and tapping the mouse to zoom out again. It restores the previous zoom level. That's actually a function that I forgot about. It's been in there for years, but I'm going to start using it again. Up next, we have two small changes that deal with media items. Support entering numeric values for take, volume, pan in properties window, and reset snap offset if right edge resized less than offset. All right, so let's look at the media item properties. So the default action to get there is to double click on a WAV file. Now we'll bring up this window. And now this is such a simple change. I can't believe it took about 13 years to get here. Uh, but if we want to set this to a very specific number, let's say minus 12, it will now go there. We have a text box that we can type into. For panning, it's the same. So we can do minus 100 or fully left. We can press C or zero or center and 100 or all the way right. We could also do minus four for 4% left. This is such a small but helpful change and it should have been here from the start. So next is the change to snap offsets. So if you haven't seen snap offsets before, you'll find it on the bottom left corner of any item. And so instead of the start of the item snapping to the grid, you can choose any point within the item. So I've got snap to grid turned on. I have my snap offset moved to kind of the middle of this item. And if I drag it, that snaps it there. This is not new. What's new is if you drag this right edge past the point of where that snap offset was, I'll just turn off snap to grid briefly so I can move that. And so now the item is shorter than where the snap offset was. Now the snap offset returns back to the center. It used to be that you could trim an item past its snap offset, and then when you go to snap to grid on that item, it snaps into this invisible point that is inaccessible uh, in that item. Probably you never ran into that bug. Again, I'm mostly showing this just for awareness of snap offsets because it's such a powerful 
and helpful tool for um, aligning things to the grid or to uh, to line up a reversed item, things like that. So if I reverse this item and I put my snap offset right at the, let's say this point here, now that snaps right to there and I can trim this um, right to that snap offset. Just a couple more things on the list. For tracks, support mono master parent send via single channel entries in parent channel dropdown in track routing dialog. What does that mean? Let's open up the routing dialog for one of the tracks. And at the top, you see parent channels. So now we can choose specifically channel one or channel two for the master parent send. So that will basically disable your, your pen for this track. All signals will go out channel two or into channel two of the next track, which in this case would be the master. But let's change our master track to have more than two tracks, let's say 10 tracks. So when the master track has, let's say 10 channels, the parent channels options give you stereo pairs or individual mono outs. And if you increase your track channel count for this track, now it will do channels one to four, two to five, three to six, et cetera, or individual mono channels. This is great news for anyone that does surround mixing or multi-channel work. Um, for everyone else, totally transparent, you'll probably never run into this. And last, we have changes to the track VU. In recent updates, they added a VU meter plugin that you can add to any track. You can even embed it into the UI. So you have a nice big meter uh, showing LUFS integrated or momentary, things like that. And in 6.35, you can now change the default peak metering to show LUFS momentary, short term. The change log says add metering settings submenu to track context menu as well as track VU context menu and support metering RMS, RMS stereo, LUFS M, and LUFS S. Under the track menu, we can choose whether it's multi channel peaks, stereo RMS, stereo peaks, LUFS M, LUFS S, and the readout, the number at the top can show you the max or the current value. Also, if we right click a track, same thing, we've got a meters submenu and same options there. So for metering RMS or momentary and short term LUFS on track, this is a great addition. And that's it for this edition of What's New in Reaper. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.